Good afternoon. Welcome to Tuesdays at 2. I'm John Tilford, Curator of Collections at Oglethorpe University Museum of Art. And unlike our typical broadcasts, I am not airing from the museum. Because we are beginning the holiday season, Elizabeth and I thought it might be a pleasant idea to air from our homes and to talk a bit about our own personal collecting interests. Uh, it's something that she and I have been doing for quite some time now. Those of us who work in the museum profession and the arts, we often like to have things at home, not just in our institutions, where we can enjoy and live with great works of art. So this month I'm going to be looking at two pieces, which happen to be some of my favorites in the collection. I began collecting just about 20 years ago when I was a graduate student living in Great Britain and began to explore and study in some of the great auction houses and galleries in London and Oxford and elsewhere, and so I was very fortunate. And so today we're going to be looking at a bit of the life and work of the great 20th century British modern artist Duncan Grant. And Duncan Grant was a member of the Bloomsbury Group. And Dorothy Parker famously quoted once as saying that the Bloomsbury Group lived in squares, painted in circles, and loved in triangles. And that was certainly quite true. They were a very bohemian, avant-garde group of very free-thinking, liberal-minded artists and scholars and writers. And Grant was at the very forefront of this movement. So Duncan Grant was born in 1885 into an upper-class British family. So he had the ability and the freedom to practice art and not worry about the necessity of necessarily earning an income. He was, um, from a very early age, um, very open about his sexuality to his close friends, but he was very close about his sexuality to the public, and he was, for all intents and purposes, a gay man, though he did have a lifelong companionship of a relationship with Vanessa Bell, which we'll get into in a bit. This particular work was painted in pastel. It's an extremely light work. It was painted in 1977, and it's about, I would say, nine by five inches, rather small, but quite rich. And I quite like it because it harkens back to the earlier styles of Camille Pissarro, who's one of the founders of Impressionism. And so even though it was painted very late in Grant's life, just one year before he died in 1978, it is, an incredibly powerful work. It's also very important because it was never intended to be sold. It was never intended to be put on the market. It was painted for and given to his friend Peter War, who was the nephew of the writer Evelyn War of great fame. And Peter War was a very quiet, solitary man who loved great wine and great art. And he became friends with Duncan Grant late in Grant's life. And in those last years, Grant gave Peter War a handful of wonderful drawings and pastels by himself and by Vanessa Bell. Peter War kept that collection until his death in 2014. And then two years later, his heirs rather, I think, too quickly sold those works at auction where they fetched very humble, small prices. And then just four years later, this piece came back to the market. And as I discussed with my students, social justice movements that we've been seeing in the last two years have very strong and direct impacts upon the art market. And so when Duncan Grant's work of Cornstalks came back to the market in 2020, it realized a much higher price, and it went for six times over its estimate, but it was something I very much wanted. And once it arrived here in Atlanta, it had traveled from England and come to the States, I realized that it was such a wonderfully rich work that I wanted to give it a more appropriate setting, and so the frame was also bought at auction in England, brought over to Atlanta, and now the frame is set with this wonderful pastel. The frame itself is actually about a hundred years older than the pastel. The frame is British as well, made about 1850, and I think it's appropriate to give it pride of place here at home. Again, Grant died in 1978. In many ways, his work was overshadowed and eclipsed by his lifelong companion, Vanessa Bell, because in the late 1970s, the women's liberation movement was at its height. And as a result, artists, scholars, and connoisseurs were focusing great attention upon female artists. And so Vanessa Bell's work began to escalate enormously in price. But because of the focus of social justice movements in the last two years, and the focus of marginalized communities like the LGBTQIA community, works by those artists have begun to increase dramatically. So again, that's why we're seeing the increase in interest in Duncan Grant, who is now considered a great icon of British gay artists during this time. 
So this is a little bit about the life and work of Duncan Grant and what it means to live with good works of art in your home. Hope you enjoyed it. And please tune in, tune in again next time, same time, same place, Q-State 2, where Elizabeth Peterson will be discussing works from her own personal collection. Thank you.